much do you think education has changed uh, over the last couple of years uh, because of COVID? What longer term impact do you think this will have? And here I'm speaking about there are several things. I mean, one, of course, is the, you know, the children, the isolation, the missing out on school that kids have experienced, but also so much of it moving towards, you know, technology, ed tech. Um, and I'm wondering even to, you know, this is becoming a very long question, so you can, you know, answer whatever part you want. But, you know, to what extent even the older debates between progressive versus traditional education, you know, to what extent that even matters so much today as we're seeing such more rapid changes that maybe anything that was progressive, what we consider progressive education in the past is already, you know, traditional education. Well, that's what I was actually going to start with. Hmm. with the, I've watched schools like Chadwick um, and other schools that I know relatively well that have been thought of as being traditional move no not move toward incorporate many mm. progressive mm. methodologies and strategies because they've learned that they work they've learned that they're good for children and they've learned that it's important for children to have the social and emotional piece that goes along with their growth as well as the skill development piece. And I think that has been happening for 20, 25 years, maybe. Yeah. Um, certainly it's happened during my, my career lifetime. Uh, so where we used to say, and to some extent we still can, there are schools that are progressive or even methodological like uh, Reggio or Montessori mm -hmm. or Waldorf uh, and their schools that are traditional, m most of those schools incorporate something from the others. And that has been happening over time. When we came into, first we started hitting the technology reality yes. and we started to bring technology into the classroom and into the school environment and figure out what was necessary for kids to learn how could they use it how could we in, in, enhance the classroom experience with it um, all of those things and that was moving along pretty well in my opinion before quite a few years before we had to deal with the pandemic and COVID. What I think the experience of the last couple of years has given us is a crash course in needing to evaluate, well, it's two things. First of all, seeing mm -hmm. that there can be a lot of value in having technology being a fundamental and primary part of someone's education. Um, and it also has made us have to jump in and quickly. I mean, I think about all the teachers who've had to turn around and in the blink of an eye, change everything about how they've been teaching a public school class. And <laughs> There've been many times when I've said to friends of mine who are still in the, in the business, I'm really <laughs> glad I don't have to make those decisions anymore. Because <laughs> it's, it, it's, been, it's been hard. It's been hard for teachers. It's been hard for administrators. Um, and it's also been pretty revolutionary, I think. Uh, and I don't think- revolutionary. Right. Mm. I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's creating- all kinds of new benefits for families, for learning styles, for all of those things. Um, but I think it's going to take a, t a while to sort it all out and having it be forced on us in the way that it has been it has also created a lot of awareness and concerns about social development and how do we have our kids mm -hmm. still maintain their friendships and 
do we let them have online friendships that seem to them, and I've heard this said by my grandchildren, by other children, what do you mean I don't have any friends? I have a whole <laughs> bunch of friends. They're in my blah, blah group. You know? <laughs> Seriously. And, and they, to them, those are real relationships. They're mm. not abstract. Yes. Um, we, we have to deal with that. We have to figure out what that really means in terms of their own development their own psychological development and it also how's it going to be applied in the world i think about a, and this doesn't have to do with technology but it's but it it's somewhat tangentially related um when i was raising my kids in mendocino county on a little ranch there was a family in town who homeschooled their four boys hmm. that I don't think those boys ever went to school um, they were all high, very high achievers hmm. um, one of them became I think well I know he's a doctor but I don't know exactly for a while he was doing doctors hmm. without borders he was doing all hmm. kinds of interesting things in world hmm. health uh, one of them became an artist one of them, you know, they, they went in very many different directions with excellent educations. What their parents did very wisely was they made 4-H their social experience and, of course, also their animal experience. 4-H. 4-H, mm. yes. The 4-H mm. Club of America mm. um, is wonderful for kids who live in a more rural setting mm -hmm. who have the opportunity to be a part of an organization that feeds their skill development, develops their interests, teaches them values of heart, hard work, all of that kind of thing, and gives kids a chance to be together. So these boys raised, you know, champion goats and <laughs> knew everything about genetics that you needed to know about goats mm. by the time they were 12. <laughs> oh, wow. And, you know, all of those kinds of things mm. that are then translatable skills that they can use to be an artist or to be a doctor or whatever. So somewhere in that story is a lesson that I think we need to hold on to as we move further into the world of technology in mm. education is that when we do that, we still need to find and have kids have the experience of something that gives them that social interaction face-to-face -face and body-to-body, mm. -body, not over mm. the screen. Mm. The community really the the sense right. of still community one of the three pillars or or exactly. or triangle or trifecta no absolutely oh and this has been so so interesting i mean and as you said i think you know well the future really is here already i think over the last couple of years we jumped 10 years into the future in terms of what education is in terms of technology we're not going back there's no going back i think after this um, but we still have to see and have to have, I'd say, you know, the cream rise to the top and things to sort themselves out as mm -hmm. we are in this already, you know, brave new world. I passed several schools and I keep looking to see if their car is in the parking lot or not, because that tells me a lot about what's happening in terms of online education for that area. And these are public schools that I'm talking about. And it occurred to me these are big brick buildings with two or three stories and you think where are the children <laughs> and it made me realize again how important it is that we completely rethink education in general i think we have an opportunity at this time because we've been launched into this new technologically 
enhanced approach and opportunity, we've been put in a position that we can take a huge step both back and forward at the same time. Yes, yes. And I don't know what it's going to look like, uh, but I know it shouldn't look the same and it shouldn't have a bunch of big brick buildings that kids are sitting in, in chairs. Mm. That doesn't mean they should be running across the field either. It just <laughs> means that there's got to, I think there are going to necessarily be different ways of structuring education to achieve the kind of goals that are gonna to need to be achieved for the world that we live in. Entertain us, what would be that step that step forward, what would, could be that possible alternative? And I can say for me, I really feel that it's about personalization. I mean, we really, right now, we personalize everything, you know, our, our phones, our, you know, entertainment, our, you know, we can personalize our shoes, you know, I mean, they're every element That's can be really personalized good. in our life, but our education and, and, you know, for children, and it's feasible today, it's really feasible to have a very personalized education. Mm -hmm. It's just maybe mm -hmm. hasn't been, you know, it hasn't gone mainstream yet. Right. And I think that's part of what I mean when I say about when I talk about knowing your child, mm -hmm. that's part. I think that's the goal of knowing your child is being able to personalize what their experience in in whether it's school or no school, not school, um, personalize it in a way that really fits optimally for them. Uh, but I don't know that we know yet what kind of form it can take. Mm. Like you said a few minutes ago, the idea that people are forming pods. I know mm -hmm. families that have bonded together because one family has a stay at home mom and the other family doesn't or is a single parent and they have helped each, they've supported each other in getting through this time of COVID when they've had to adjust everything about how they deal with their work life as well as their kids' school life. Mm. Um, and I think that many of them have seen the advantages. I've heard numerous people say, I'm not going back. They don't know what mm. they're going toward yet. Yes. And I think that's what we have to, I don't think we've even really got a vision for it quite yet. I think that's coming. And because I'm not in the, in the trenches anymore, <laughs> um, I don't feel like I have my ear to the ground of, on what the conversations are that are going on among educational leaders and also even among parents to some extent to, to figure out what that vision can be. I know it won't be singular. And that, again, goes back to the personalization part. I think there'll be many different modalities. And that's going to create more choice. And that's going to require more discernment. And that's all going to have to be attended to as we move into this new era. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos.